Okay, we're back at Oracle Open World. My name is John Furrier, the founder of SiliconAngle.com, SiliconAngle.tv, and we're inside theCUBE, our flagship telecast, here in San Francisco, California for Oracle Open World 2011, and inside Oracle Open World is the big show around IT, Oracle databases, Oracle software, it's the biggest IT show on the planet. I mean, it's almost in size as CES. But one of the things that we do here at uh, SiliconAngle.tv's theCUBE is we do spotlights. Spotlights were introduced uh, to go in depth into conversations. And I'm here with my co-host Dave Vellante. Dave, tell us about this spotlight around high performance data center. John, this spotlight is focused on the high performance data center. It's looking at the major trends within microprocessor design and how they're manifesting themselves in new data center designs and what it means for customers and new workloads. And we're here with David Floyer, who's an expert in that field. David, welcome. Hi, thank you. Thanks for coming in. And um, so what we do in these spotlights is we try to uh, put together some visual aids um, and Mark will put up various slides on the screen and we, first the thing we want to look at is some of the trends that are, that are driving change in the data center. And what we're seeing is you've got a number of megatrends. Virtualization is obviously the big one. Everybody talks about huge data volumes. And David, as we know, heat density is a big problem in the server space, isn't it? Why is that? Absolutely. Um, heat density was rising very rapidly, 30% per year for quite some time, until the, uh, the, disc, the, the chip vendors took it on and worked to reduce the, the heat density. And it's been uh, rising slowly for the last few years. But uh, it's going to be, become a bigger problem. Uh, they've uh, run out of tricks, they've got it down to the minimum. There's going to be a rapid increase in heat density because fundamentally, the closer you can get chips together, the closer you can get processes together, the higher the, the, the speed of the, of the processes of the systems. And that's what people are driving for, is very high uh, density and high performance data centers. So there's all kinds of other residual effects here. We're seeing the convergence of compute, networking, and storage, something that we've talked about a, a, a lot um, on Wikibon, on Silicon Angle. Uh, different types of data uh, are coming into play. I'm talking about video here and audio. David, I know you're big on video. Obviously, unstructured content and mixed media. Uh, and then we've also talked a lot about the communications between processor and memory and I.O. devices. And um, 10 gigabit E, uh, uh, InfiniBand yep. has come along. We're yep. at Oracle Open World, we know. Uh, yep. Larry Ellison loves InfiniBand. Yep. He's taken a, an, an, an investment in, in a company called Mellanox. Um, and we've now got something new here, which is with 64-bit, you've got practically infinite address spaces, which is supporting these data in memory and what we're calling data in flash yep. architectures. Right. Um, and we're seeing a move towards scale-out designs. There's still scale-up, we're going to talk about that in a minute, but, but scale-out is the, the new hot thing in, uh, in the data center. And we're seeing that in Web 2.0 and other environments, Facebook and Absolutely. others. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so let's talk about the competitive landscape. You know, John, at, at, on theCUBE, we love to, to <laughs> use sports metaphors. You know, these are the horses on the track. Yeah, and Dave, I mean, to me, it's all about knowing the horse on the track. In the data center, it's been very competitive lately, and com competition has been heating up because we saw things like Juniper having some layoffs, retooling their company, the software switch is kind of coming back at the convergence layer, HP's doing really well, some are doing bad, but what's happening is cloud's taking over, and, and at the fundamental speeds and feeds of it, which Oracle was all the rage about on the keynote, you know, it's all about what horses are going to win this race. Now, you know, we call it the you know, triple crown. Um, the real triple crown was, you know, the PC business, okay? That was uh, the initial, I think, the Kentucky Derby. Intel won that one, they did pretty, pretty well. Um, and then you saw the server business in the data center. Multi-core, um, surplant the Unix type Spark and Solaris. Call that the Preakness. Now we got the Belmont, the longest of the races. So, you know, Intel's the secretariat of the, the industry. And you know, I believe that they're really going to run a great race and fly in this next, next uh, race uh, because it's going to be about mobility, it's going to be about um, that kind of performance. Uh, we're talking about stuff that we heard, heard about in memory stuff, talking about heat, management, all those tools. Intel has literally a great R&D in this area. So I think they're, the prospects look good for Intel. So Mark, I wonder if you could expand that slide for us. Um, because um, 
This is sort of the lay of the land here. The champ right now is Intel. The x86 architecture, I guess Intel and AMD, but Intel is the champ. The clear volume and, and revenue winner. Um, this happens to be, uh, if you can get that slide up there, you, this happens to be Secretariat um, winning at the Belmont. You know, I can't, don't want to take the analogy too far, but we're not ready to call uh, 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 Intel the winner in the mobile space yet, but that's Ronnie Turcott looking back, 31 lengths. Um, you can see the race for second place going on, if you could put that back up there. Yeah, um, here it is. is between IBM, PA Risk, and Fujitsu Oracle and Spark, and David, we're going to talk about that, but but in some detail in a moment. But they're going for the largest single processor yeah. performance, right? right? That's the scale up that we were talking about before. Yeah, you need a, a combination of scale up and scale out, and from the scale out point of view, as you said, x86 um, and the volume in the server market that Intel have, that's a fantastic story, and that's that's winning. Uh, and they're going very up, very far up in the scale up as well. Uh, but uh, so certainly IBM uh, have had a, a very, very fast single processor, 4.25 gigahertz, uh, very well constructed. And that's been the leader in terms of the largest processor, it's the largest chip and processor. They've got a 32-way, which really is an awesome box. So they're going after what are increasingly becoming niche workloads, that part the of the market. The mainframe type. Yes, right. yeah. And then, yeah. and then you know, trail in the pack is, is HP Itanium. It's just a yep. matter of time. Um, yeah. Uh, there's a big war going on between HP and, and, and Oracle, and, uh, Oracle yeah. right now, where Oracle is pulling support. What a lot of people don't know is Oracle's actually going to support Itanium for the next seven years. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. and after seven years, they're not going to fix bugs anymore on Itanium. So there's this big rift going on. I mean, I think that in, in HP and Intel, of course, have said they're going to support Itanium for 10 plus years, but seven years is a long time. You know, hopefully by then, most of the bugs will be, you know, squashed. Um, <laughs> but it's not like Oracle's pulling support for Itanium tomorrow. Okay, that, no. that, that's an urban legend, all right? Yeah. Itanium is, if you're an Itanium customer, you got, you got some time. Yeah, so but don't freak and, out. and in, in addition to that, the HP and Intel parts of, of this, they're, they're doing every other cycle uh, in terms of performance. So they are, they are going to be behind the others. Uh, yeah, as I no say, doubt it's just it. a matter of time. So, yeah. um, and then you've got the, the foal over here in the picture is ARM. ARM, right? mm -hmm. absolutely. Are they a future yeah. player? In the data center, everybody used to laugh at Intel. Ah, oh, Intel is just for PCs, it's a toy. Well, people are maybe saying the same thing about ARM, but Facebook gave a hard look at ARM, right? Absolutely, a number of the people have looked hard at ARM because it is so, uh, going back to heat density, it is so efficient from a, 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 a heat point of view. So putting these much smaller, cheaper chips in very close proximity was one architecture that's being looked at. and. Uh, in my view, uh, we are going to see uh, servers uh, at the low end, in particular, using the ARM technology. They're going, they're going to be coming in underneath the uh, x86 umbrella in the server end, but they're not going to have a significant impact on, on the medium and high end of the, of the marketplace. Uh, so I think they are a fall. Uh, David, um, you wrote a piece on Wikibon uh, this week, actually, saying that Oracle was um, economical with the truth, I believe is how you said it. Um, yep. Very British way of, of Understatement. saying they're, they're, they're stretching the truth and or maybe downright you know, misclaiming things. Um, but at any rate, here are the facts. Um, the big X's, Exologic, Exadata, Exalytics. Exalytics. Run on Xeon today. Correct, correct. yes. Yeah. Okay, now having said that, um, Oracle announced the Spark Cluster, the, the T4 supercluster. The T4, cluster. yep, supercluster, um, which is uh, the exologic equivalent. The uh, why is that important? Um, because the, the 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 key thing that Oracle want to maintain is their customer base. They've got a very loyal customer base running on Solaris. A lot of their uh, installed base, uh, seventy percent, I think they said, was running on uh, uh, Solaris and on Spark. 
Uh, that's a lot of customers and a lot of goodwill. So they need to keep those customers. It is expensive and risky if they try and convert them to XLogic. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's risky because it's x86 and they can go anywhere. And it's expensive for the customer. So by far the cheapest and most effective way of keeping those customers happy is to keep on turning the crank on the uh, uh, Spark, uh, Spark system. That's exactly what HP didn't do when they had their own chipset. They went to Itanium, they left their customers in the lurch with a big conversion issue. So Oracle have got it right in, in the sense that they've got to put money, got to put effort into keeping that large customer base happy. And then just, just again to, to go through the facts, and this is important because Oracle claimed like a zillion world records and number one in everything and, and yeah. every category and, and and when you, you wrote a piece, you squinted through there, it's really you know, not the case. That it's not the case. Oracle it's, it, was yeah. comparing um, <laughs> it, it, its you know, latest and greatest with you know, uh, a somewhat outdated configuration. It was using Flash, the other configuration it wasn't, wasn't using so it was really, really tuned, so you have to be careful with these claims. But, having said that, the T4 performance is much, much higher than T3. It's, a, it's, so it's about good. twice, and about twice, and sometimes it'll be more than twice. And, and, and yeah. it's about on par yeah. with IBM, so in this game of leapfrog, um, Sun Oracle has caught up it, It's IBM. caught up on the process, now it's got to put more processes together. But the, pro but, the, but, the, but the problem is that now it's IBM's turn to jump. Exactly, oh. so, so they, they, they've got to keep going, and they've got to keep going hard. So uh, Larry has promised a T5 next year, which is going to double the number of, it's going to be an increase in speed and double the number of sockets. Uh, so that'll take them on their way. So, yeah, but IBM has a very substantial lead in terms of the largest single processor at the moment. Uh, sorry, the largest single system at the moment uh, that can be going. But, uh, but uh, Oracle can still be successful by keeping their current customers happy. If they, if they do that, then to me, they're, they, they, they've, uh, they've won a lot. So competing with IBM for that, 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 that single scale up mainframe class and uh, essentially conceding the broader market to Intel, right? Yes, yeah. yes. Okay, yeah. all right, here's, here's the watch list, all the things that, that, that are on our watch, watch list. These new workloads are emerging. You know, we hear a lot about them, cloud, big data, web, video, they're real. Uh, they're certainly real at companies like Facebook. Um, we had Fusion IO on earlier, we saw some, you know, amazing action with, uh, with, with Facebook there. The, these are, and others, Apple, uh, Apple announced iCloud uh, availability today. And so, um, we're really seeing these workloads hit the mainstream data center and, 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 and managing those workloads will become increasingly important. How you take all these commodity distributed servers and allocate workloads to them is becoming more and more important, isn't it? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And then, heat density, as you pointed out, is on the rise again. The mm. ASHRAE data shows it flattening out. You have said, that's wrong. That's yes. not correct. Yep, very, very clearly to me. Uh, they've, had the, uh, they've had four or five years of the, uh, inter the chips, Intel and everybody else, working at this problem, uh, turning things off, uh, trying to cut, cut down the amount of power. A lot of it driven, by, obviously, by the mobile marketplace. Uh, so they've been very successful in that, and it's been uh, around 5%, uh, 10%, but it's going to go up again. Uh, and these systems that are being produced by uh, Facebook and, and Apple, etc., they need the highest performance possible to deal with these huge databases that they're putting in place. And these databases need to be really real time. So if I'm using uh, uh, Apple and I buy an app and my wife is on the other side on the same account of the, of the world, she wants to see her app coming down uh, at exactly the same time or, the, or the, uh, the, the, the tune that we've bought together. So this type of very, very uh, high volume, high speed database uh, is going to take real, uh, real architecture and real uh, uh, compute power to put together and it's things like Fusion I.O., uh, very flash memory, and putting things very, very close together that are going to make this possible. And we're, we're, gonna, we're seeing Romley come out uh, shortly, sure. so we're watching that. Yeah. One of the other things we're watching is how CIOs are going to fund the transformation from point A, where they are today, 
with a lot of legacy diverse infrastructure to point B, which is this new scale out, new workloads, uh, that's not trivial. No. Um, there are certain things you can put on green fields, there are certain things you, you can't. That's what we're all about at wikibon.org. You know, it's, it's, it's peers helping peers solve problems, so come please check out the site, contribute your knowledge, or if you got a question, ask it. Go to siliconangle.com, go to Silicon Angle TV. Lots of resources there to help you through these transitions. Um, thanks for watching this uh, spotlight on the High Performance Data Center, everybody. Um, uh, as I say, check out the sites, check out the resources. You've been, you've been a great audience. Uh, keep the questions coming, and um, we'll be right back from Oracle Open World Live 2011.